this lesson, we are going to discuss proteins. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the components of amino acids and identify the levels of structures and different uses of proteins in the processes of life. Eggs, poultry, meat, meats. These are just some of the common sources of proteins in meals. But proteins are not limited to this food. Protein is an essential biomolecule that is taken by athletes, bodybuilders, and those who tone their bodies. When looking at the nutrition labels of whey protein, a list of amino acids is shown. This is because proteins are biomolecules that are composed of amino acid units. Amino acids have five important components. The major component is the alpha carbon or the central carbon which has four attachments. First is the hydrogen atom. Second, an amino group which is a nitrogen bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Third, a side chain or R group. And lastly, a carboxyl group which is a carbon that is double bonded to oxygen and single bonded to a hydroxyl group. All amino acids are the same in the amino group, carboxyl group, and hydrogen attachments. They only differ in the side chain. There are 20 different amino acids, and these are classified based on the property of their side chains. There are amino acids with hydrocarbon side chains. These are alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, phenylalanine, and proline. There are amino acids with neutral R groups. These are serine, threonine, methionine, tryptophan, cysteine, asparagine, and glutamine. And lastly, there are amino acids with acetic or basic R groups. These are glutamic acid, arginine, histidine, glycine, aspartic acid, lysine, and tyrosine. These 20 amino acids form polypeptide chains or the polymers of proteins. In the polymerization process of proteins, dehydration or the formation of water molecules from the amino acid components will be the main driving mechanism. The hydroxyl group of the carboxyl group will form water with one hydrogen atom of the amino group. This will happen for every adjacent amino acids. Once the water molecules are formed and removed, the amino acids will form a polypeptide chain. The carbon atom of the carboxyl group now forms a bond with the nitrogen atom of the amino group of the next amino acid. The bond formed is called a peptide bond. In polypeptide chains, one end is always the amino group or the N terminus. The other end is the C terminus or the end with the carboxyl group. The formation of a much larger protein structure does not end with the joining of amino acids. Proteins have different levels of protein structures. The polymer formed by the amino acids is called the primary structure. As the primary structure becomes larger, hydrogen bonding allows the proteins to be folded. Proteins can form an alpha helix, which is a delicate coil held together between every fourth amino acid, or beta pleated sheets, wherein two or more strands of the polypeptide chain lying side by side are connected between parts of the two parallel polypeptide backbones. These two structures are called the secondary structures. The overall shape of a polypeptide results when there are interactions between the side chains or R groups of the various amino acids from the secondary structure. This is called the tertiary structure. Lastly, quaternary structure is the association of multiple polypeptides forming a functional protein. The functions of proteins now vary per cell or per organ or even per organism. Proteins may serve as catalysts which contribute to the selective acceleration of chemical reactions. Examples of this are digestive enzymes and restrictive enzymes of the DNA. Proteins also act as storage or source of amino acids. For example, casein in milk and ovalbumin in eggs. Some hormones are also proteins. These are chemical messengers that function for the coordination of an organism's activities. Example of which is insulin. Some proteins also function in movement. For example, motor proteins for cilia and flagella and actin and myosin for muscles. Proteins also function as protection against disease like antibodies. They also serve as means for movement of substances in and out of a semi-permeable membrane like that of the phospholipid bilayer. 
These are also functional as responses of cell to chemical stimuli like those in neuron junctions. And lastly, proteins are used for structural support like keratin for hair, horns, and feathers, silk fibers for cocoons and webs, and collagen and elastin as connective tissues. Now, to conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. Proteins are biomolecules that are composed of amino acid monomers. Dehydration reactions allow the polymerization of amino acids through the formation of peptide bonds. Proteins have four levels of structures. And lastly, some of the functions of proteins include catalyst, storage, hormones, movement, defense, transport, receptor, and structure. And that ends our discussion on proteins.